So there you are, sitting at lunch, enjoying a sandwich. When you're finished, you take your last drink of juice, wipe your mouth, and head to your next meeting. In a few minutes, you're thinking about which kid has what activity or that upcoming science project. You've probably forgotten all about the sandwich you just ate, but it's still in your stomach, sort of like a science experiment that happens all the time. The mouth starts everything moving. Your digestive system started working even before you took the first bite of that sandwich. And the digestive system will be busy at work on your chewed up lunch for the next few hours, or sometimes days, depending on what you've eaten. This process is called digestion. Digestion allows your body to get the nutrients and energy it needs from the food you eat. So let's find out what's happening to that sandwich, salad, burger, or soda you just had for lunch. Even before you eat, when you smell a tasty food, see it or think about it, digestion begins. Saliva or spit begins to form in your mouth. When you do eat, the saliva breaks down the chemicals in the food, which help make the food mushy and easy to swallow. Your tongue helps out by pushing the food around while you chew with your teeth. When you're ready to swallow, the tongue pushes a tiny bit of mushed up food called a bolus towards the back of your throat and into the opening of your esophagus, the second part of the digestive tract. On the way down, the esophagus is a stretchy like pipe that is about 10 inches long. It moves food from the back of your throat to your stomach. But also at the back of your throat is the windpipe, which allows air to come in and out of your body. When you swallow a small ball of mushed up food or liquid, a special flap called the epiglottis flops down over the opening of your windpipe to make sure the food enters the esophagus and not the windpipe. If you've ever eaten or drinking anything too fast and started to cough and heard someone say that your drink went down the wrong way, that person meant it went down your windpipe by mistake. This happens when the epiglottis doesn't have enough time to flop down and you cough involuntarily, not thinking about it to clear your windpipe. Once food has entered the esophagus, it doesn't drop right into the stomach. Instead, muscles of the wall and the esophagus move in a way to slowly squeeze the food through the esophagus. This takes two to three seconds. See you in the stomach. Your stomach, which is attached to the end of the esophagus, is a stretchy sac shaped like the letter J. It has three important jobs. One, to store the food you've eaten. Two, to break down the food into a liquidy mixture. And three, to slowly empty that liquidy mixture into the small intestines. The stomach is like a mixer, churning and mashing together all the small balls of food that come down the esophagus into smaller and smaller pieces. It does this with the help of strong muscles in the walls of the stomach and gastric juices that also come from the stomach's walls. In addition to breaking down food, gastric juices also help kill bacteria that might be eaten in the food. Onward to the small intestines, 22 feet isn't small at all. The small intestines is a long tube that's about one and a half to two inches around, and it's packed inside you beneath your stomach. If you stretched out an adult's small intestines, it would be around 22 feet long. That's like 22 notebooks lined up end to end all in a row. The small intestines breaks down the food mixture even more so your body can absorb all the vitamins, minerals, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. The turkey on your sandwich is full of proteins and a little fat, and the small intestines can help extract them with a little help from three friends, the pancreas, liver, and gallbladder. Those organs send different juices to the first part of the small intestines. These juices help to digest food and allow the body to absorb nutrients. The pancreas makes juices that help the body digest fats and protein. A juice from the liver called the bile helps to absorb fats into the bloodstream. And the gallbladder serves as the warehouse for bile, 
storing it until the body needs it. Your food may spend as long as four hours in the small intestines and will become a thin watery mixture. It's time well spent because at the end of the journey, the nutrients from your meal can pass from the intestines into the blood. Next stop for these nutrients, the liver. And the leftover waste, which is part of the food that your body can't use, goes on to the large intestines. Love your liver. The nutrient-rich blood comes directly to the liver for processing. The liver filters out harmful substances or waste, turning some of the waste into more bile. The liver even helps figure out how many nutrients will go to the rest of the body and how many will stay behind in storage. For example, the liver stores certain vitamins and a type of sugar your body uses for energy. That's one large intestine. At three or four inches around, the large intestine is fatter than the small intestine, and it's almost the last stop on the digestive tract. Like the small intestines, it's packed into the body and would measure five feet long if you spread it out. The large intestines has a tiny tube with a closed end coming off of it called the appendix. It's part of the digestive tract, but it doesn't seem to do anything, though it can cause big problems because it sometimes gets infected and needs to be removed. Like I mentioned, after most of the nutrients are removed from the food mixture, there is waste left over. Stuff your body can't use. This stuff needs to be passed out of your body. Can you guess where it ends up? Well, here's a hint. It goes out with a flush. Before it goes, it passes through part of the large intestines called the colon, which is where the body gets the last chance to absorb the water and some minerals into the blood. As the water leaves the waste product, what's left gets harder and harder, and it keeps moving along until it becomes solid. Yup. It's poop, called a stool or a bowel movement. The large intestines pushes the poop into the rectum, the very last stop on the digestive tract. The solid waste stays here until you are ready to go to the bathroom. When you go to the bathroom, you are getting rid of this solid waste by pushing it through the anus. There's the flush we're talking about. Dig that digestive system. You can help your digestive system by drinking water and eating a healthy diet that includes foods rich in fiber. High fiber foods like vegetables and fruits and whole grains make it easier for poop to pass through your system. The digestive system is a pretty important part of your body. Without it, you couldn't get the, the nutrients you need to grow properly and stay healthy. And the next time you sit down to lunch, you'll know exactly where that food goes from start to finish.